conditional probabilities. Uh, the next picture I've been warned not to show, but, uh, because I'm in the UK, but I think that's... <laughs> but in continental Europe, it's not a problem. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Mammography screening. Yeah? Here's a woman who uh, is 50 years old and older. So that's the, that's the reason these pictures were made and published, at least in continental Europe, they're all up about 18 years old. Yeah, and then mistakenly they believe that they are at risk of breast cancer. So uh, in, in Germany, like in the UK, women in the 40s and 50s are invited for mammography screening and assume a woman would test positive, so suspicious. And she comes to you and asks you, do I have now breast cancer? Or how likely is it? 99%? 90 60, 50, tell me, so that I know what to do before the biopsy. How should I sleep this night? Now, uh, I am training, uh, I have trained in the last years 1,000 doctors in their continuing medical education in risk. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's the only course I've ever gotten, and it has been recently canceled. Because the pharmaceutical industry who sponsors all this continuing medical education in Germany, in the US, and everywhere, is not particularly interested in um, <coughs> having doctors who know what questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, for the doctors, the most successful course. Yeah? They rated it highest, even above courses. Uh, what can I, um, uh, so, so what treatments does the health care, the health insurance pay on such things? Yeah? <laughs> so, uh, assume so when I have these doctors, I ask them, now this is, now I'll give you an example of 160 gynecologists. Yeah? That's something that's a topic, I should know that. And in, uh, what they should tell this woman, in case they wouldn't know, I give them the information in uh, probabilities. And uh, conditional probabilities, like sensitivity and specificity, also cause fog in the medical mind. And I'll try it with you. You are all experts. <coughs> but maybe it works. <laughs> so I want to first uh, get you into a state of mind where you basically <laughs> don't know what it is. And then I'll show you how to change something. <coughs> Same as before, five-year survival rates and mortality rates are clear. So, <coughs> OK. And the numbers are simple. We just make them simple. Uh, there is screening, and we know about the population that the uh, probability that women in this population has breast cancer is 1%. Second, if she has breast cancer, the probability that she tests positive is 90%. Third, if she doesn't have breast cancer, the probability that she nevertheless tests positive is 9%. So we have a base rate of 1%, a sensitivity of 90%, a false positive rate of 9%. What do you tell her? She tested positive, and she wants to know what the chance that I really have cancer, given a positive result. If you now feel fog in your mind, then you understand the state of most doctors. In the <coughs> but they have a woman there, and they can say, but I never understood it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you uh, before. No, I'll give you the, the answer. <laughs> so, uh, what I train these doctors is forget about these conditional probabilities, change them to what we call natural frequencies. Natural frequencies are just think about 100, huh? and then take them down, forget all this. Uh, do the easiest way, think about 100 women hmm, who test positive. <coughs> we know the same information. We expect that one has, that one has cancer and she likely tests positive, 90%. And from the nine, 99 who do not have cancer, we expect another 9 to test positive. So if 10 who test positive, how many of those 10s do actually have cancer? Now you see, 1 out of 10. So, let's, I first show you what doctors, 160 gynecologists in the first education, continuing education, these are uh, men and women in their 40s and 50s, <coughs> think what the answer is. We know now, one out of ten is the best estimate that we have. So, now the 
starters uh, have a telesystem, they have four answers. That's the correct answer, and I scale the answer with an order of magnitude down, and as far as it gets uh, up to 90 out of 100, and I chose 81% because I know from earlier studies that many doctors in desperation take the sensitivity 90% and subtract the false positive rate. <laughs> Makes no sense, but it's a. <laughs> 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 what you see here, uh, if you just look at the spread, it's, then you see where medical education fails. And these are gynecologists, these are not urologists. Yeah? And also you see that 60% uh, thinks it's roughly 9 out of 10 or 8 out of 10. Yeah? And you can now imagine what unnecessary fear and panic these doctors instill in the poor women because they don't know and have never learned. And uh, so what I do, I'll train them in translating this in natural frequencies. And what you see here, this is after 90 minutes, they get other trainings too. And now you can see that most of them get it. There are a few hopeless cases. But this is just a 90 minute training. And has many more things. OK. Uh, why does this work? This is now the cognitive psychology part. Here you have natural sequences. It's, the numbers are slightly different because now we used the, 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 the number from the studies and the doctors were not supposed to do complex, uh, complex calculation. Here we have the <coughs> probabilities. Why is it the case? Here you know why you had thought in your mind. That's called base rule. And if you don't know it, look at it, you know that's hard to do. And the interesting thing is now the following. Herbert Simon has always said that uh, you solve a problem by finding the right representation, not necessarily by doing complex calculation. And this works in the same way. The representation in terms of natural frequency <coughs> simplifies the computation. So you have the positives and disease, the positive no disease, and you have roughly 1 out of 10 or 1 out of 11. You see through them. And that's a deep insight. We now have a natural frequencies in the uh, vocabulary of evidence-based medicine. As in the UK, it's Bandolier who has it in. And doctors start to understand. And we cannot only teach doctors, but also lawyers and judges. <laughs> and uh, this is a study we have done with uh, judges and professors of law. The problems are the, the same that I have. So there is a murder and a, uh, uh, a rape and DNA evidence. And nothing is certain in this world, including DNA evidence. <coughs> there are sensitivities and statistics, maybe short. If it's in probabilities, then most of the judges <coughs> really don't understand. Uh, if it's in natural frequencies, then it skyrockets. This is not training. This is just changing the representation. And law students similar. And in the court, you have a guilty verdict, yes or no. And what you see, when they're confused, yeah. it's more often guilty. And when it's transparent, it's less often the same with the students. Now we get to learning. Now we can do much more. We can train them to translate uh, these conditional probabilities <coughs> into natural frequencies. Here are two studies. One with American students. This was the time when I taught at the University of Chicago. And uh, rule training is you teach them, here are the sensitivities, specifically put them into base rule. Huh? And they somehow get it, as you see, up before they are not good. Huh? Afterwards, they get up to here, so 60% of the test. But then it happens what, ha what really hurts every teacher. Huh? You get them through the test, yeah, yeah, and then they forget. It's gone. And why did you exist? Yeah. And, there's a, and the key is now do something, yeah, not just teach statistics, but in a way that the mind can understand this. A computer doesn't mind yeah, with its probabilities or frequencies, yeah, but our mind minds. Yeah. So we, in this group, we taught them to translate. Yeah? Forget about this probability, translate the natural frequencies. As you can see, with new 
two problems in just state. That's the important thing. Yeah? And the same with German students. German students were better at the beginning, they were better there, no? but also they forgot. Right? But you can get the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> I have argued that we can't even uh, get children hmm, to do base rule, yeah? which if you read the uh, psychological literature of the last 30 years, uh, some of my dear friends in the, all over the world said, oh, a uh, Stanford student can't do it. Huh? How could he do any children? He can't do this. So I'll show you a study that we've done in, uh, with <coughs> fourth and fifth graders. The problem were not mammography, but something that children can do, Bayesian, uh, so whether someone cheats, if he has a red right nose and such <coughs> things. And what you see here, this is all the Bayesian answers. Um, with probability, it's zero, of course. We have no idea. <laughs> but the natural frequency, you already get the sixth graders, sometimes at about the level of adults. But this can be done. But there is still, it still doesn't happen. Neither in the US, nor in Germany, nor in the UK. Risk is mostly associated with better technologies, yeah? or uh, bureaucracies, yeah? homeland securities, and other insults <coughs> to anyone who moves into the US. Yeah? But not with making people smarter.